Hi, so last episode I left off at this slide displaying what the essential and non-essential amino acids were and whether they were glucogenic, glutagenic and ketogenic or ketogenic. So now I'm going to go on to discuss the catabolism of them. So basically, amino acids, the amino group is generally removed in the early stages of catabolism by transamination or deamination. So the amino transferases are specific for their amino acids, require the coenzyme pyridoxal phosphate, which is also known as vitamin B6, so pyridoxal which has either PLP, P, pyridoxal phosphate, or just vitamin B6 from now on. Carbon skeleton of an amino acid remains as a keto acid, which depend and the fate of that depends on what the amino acid it was derived from. So I think the skeletons are very different, they can break down into different compounds. So I'm going to start with alanine, which is the simplest of the, the um, well, the simplest of the amino acids, sorry, lost my words. And the enzyme for this is alanine amino transferase, as you'll see quite often is they're abbreviated to three letters long, so you get ALT is your alanine amino transferase. And as I said, it requires PLP. And Basically what happens is this reaction can go two ways, it's either synthesized from pyruvate or it's catabolized back to pyruvate and it relies on glutamate and alpha ketoglutarate. As I said earlier it's glucogenic because it produces pyruvate. Basically what happens is this amine group here goes back that way, attaches where this carbonyl was on alpha ketoglutarate. It can also be synthesized by stealing this amine from glutamate and attaching it to pyruvate where this carboxyl group was. So, asparagine, it's called asparagine, it's named after asparagus, where it's the first place it was actually isolated from. And it deaminates asparagine to produce aspartate, as you can see here, nice simple reaction, H2O, that comes out. It's often used as a treatment. The enzyme asparginase actually uses a treatment of some leukemias as patient some leukemia patients as tumor cells cannot synthesize their own asp asparagine and rely on asparagine in the circulatory system, so they steal it from elsewhere in the body. So if you've got asparaginase in the blood flow, you know what happens is it breaks down any asparagine in the blood flow, which means the tumor itself can't steal it from there. And asparagine synthase is used in biosynthesis. Okay, you could go from aspartate to asparagine using um, asparaginase as well. And glutamine uh, acts as a nitrogen donor, so glutamine is the next step from glutamate, which I'll discuss later. Unfortunately, this slide is not very clear, but I'll talk about it anyway in just a second. So basically, aspartate is transaminated to form oxaloacetate by aspartate. So that was the last step in your TCA cycle, or your first, depending on your opinion of it. It requires your PLP, and as I said, oxaloacetate is either used in gluconeogenesis or the TCA cycle. Remember, in gluconeogenesis, the um, pyruvate is converted to oxaloacetate and then back to glucose via multiple steps. And remember, you can produce aspartate from oxaloacetate as well. So that's another product you can get out of the TCA cycle. As you see, it requires alpha ketoglutarate and glutamate again. Aspartate, basically, this gets stolen here. This amine gets nicked by alpha ketoglutarate to form the oxaloacetate with the carbonyl rather than an amine. And the alpha ketoglutarate gets the amine where it had a carbonyl, so transferred. Glutamate and glutamine form pretty much the core body of this transport of nitrogen around the body. Both required by the urea cycle, formed by degraded, formed using mostly amino transferases, as you'll see earlier. Every single one seems to require glutamate and alpha keep glutarate and glutamine. So. And it's used to transport ammonia in a non-toxic form because mm -hmm. ammonia is actually toxic. It's a neurotoxin, which is not good for you. And it transports it from the peripheral tissues, good for your brain, etc. So 
glutamine via glutaminase goes to glutamate as you can see here produces that NH2 group in favour of this and obviously water comes in, binds there and you get your NH4 out in this pronate state and NH4 plus of kit glutarate produces NADP plus from NADPH under hydrogen to form glutamate or well, glutamate drives it back the other way NAD plus NADH in the product as you can see they are actually different NAD and NADP so just be remembering that now glutamate dehydrogen is actually one of the three enzymes in humans that can incorporate free ammonia into an organic compound as you see here your NH3 comes in goes up an NH2 of the glutamate goes to alpha-keep glutarate and transaminate an amino acid. It can obviously go the other way, so the NH2 comes off the amino acid via amino transferase to be your alpha-keto acid from an amino acid. The alpha-keto glutarate is converted to glutamate, which then by glutamate dehydrogenase can give out an a NH3. Um, it starts getting a bit more complex around methionine and cysteine cysteine sorry so they share a common catabolic pathway and methionine is converted to homocysteine via SAM and SAM SAM and SA or SAM and SAH intermediates which are your S adenosyl methionine and your S adenosyl homocysteine as you can see here methionine goes around to SAM using an ATP uh, SAM goes to SA using a methyl transferase, something takes a methyl group, see it's denoted as X here. Adenosine is given off, and you get homocysteine, which then goes down this pathway or can be converted back to methionine by methionine synthase using a folate molecule TH4, which is your THF. Tetrahydro, I can't pronounce it, but it does. Anyway, so after this bit, you get your homocysteine from your methionine arm, and this will also show breakdown of cysteine. So, what happens is you get homocysteine, serine attaches to it, loses a water molecule, give you this compound. As you can see, Sulfet, so lost that H, hydrogen, and bonded here. Now, this then gains water and loses an ammonium ion and produces cysteine and alpha, -ketob alpha ketobutyrate. As you can see, it's a bit confusing because they haven't drawn this diagram particularly clearly, but you get these two products from reaction 6 here. Reaction 7 then attaches coash. NAD to give CO2, which goes to propanoyl CoA, which is then metabolized by a few steps. This just represents two or three steps to succinyl CoA. Now, cysteine is uh, converted to its sulfate. The sulfate can either be excreted in urine or combined with ATP to form PAPs, which is used as coenzyme for sulfur, and tran sulfur transferases. The pathway produces glutamate pyruvate. And serine, glycine, and threonine also produce pyruvate. So, as you can see here, cysteine goes to cysteine sulfinic acid. Keep the glutarate is converted to glutamate. Pyruvate is given off, and you're left with sulfite, which is converted to sulfate, which can be used with ATP to produce pups, or is excreted in the urine. I'll talk about ketogenic amino acids in the next episode. Hope this has helped, and thank you for listening.